all right welcome back to SoFlow tv again everybody just go ahead and hit that subscribe button please and let's get right into this and i want you to leave your honest opinion let's be like a think tank where we come together and form solutions that we think are realistic and can actually be put in place to fix things we are going because there's a lot we are going with us in jamaica especially where our jamaica constabulary force law enforcement officials are concerned because we've found so many of them to be involved in criminal activities are dirty to some level now this article was actually printed in 2018 of october and this was a warning from mark shields seen and mark shields told us certain things that we i think we needed to pay attention to but we did not so this is an edited excerpt of a presentation at the cin caribbean lecture series and it went like this this was done in october 24 2018 in new york city during the nearly 14 years this is mark shields during the nearly 14 years that i have lived in jamaica the murder rate has been running at an average of 1400 per year all nice and flaky very flaky when you make your cross it have to be flaky like this it all right my soflow tv audience listen if you have not found out about this channel yet and subscribed to this channel and started following this channel called eat good tv i suggest that you go do so now i did not even know that sweet potatoes can make a punch i did not know that bummies can make burgers i have never had pineapple pork before i'm not even that good of a pork eater but after seeing this lady, Miss Margaret, over at Eat Good TV, do the pineapple pork, I tell you, say, I wanted to try the pineapple pork. Listen, man, she is setting the bar high, all right? And if you're into Jamaican food, I know you might be able to cook it already, but I guarantee you, you're not cooking it like she's cooking it. She is adding a twist to it. So, Miss Margaret, big up yourself over at Eat Good TV and So Flow TV audience. If you're seeing this, please go find Eat Good TV and click that link and tell her I sent you. Shout out to the Gleaner for this article. Listen to what I'm saying. Now. He said, During the nearly 14 years that I have lived in Jamaica, the murder rate has been running at an average of 1,400 per year since 2005 that i arrived about 20,000 jamaicans have become victims of homicide oh no i hear them numbers yeah Rated. he went on to say if we don't get the police functioning fit for purpose trusted professional and effective all the social intervention programs improvements in education job creation and housing will not be enough first and foremost we must fix the police they are our first line of defense if we don't have an effective police service supported by a justice system that works we can expect another 20,000 murders in the next 14 years i would say or less you know about the reputation of the jamaica constabulary force allegations of corruption death squads organized fatal shootings, nepotism, police involved directly with criminals, including intelligence that senior officers have been complicit in allowing drugs to be trafficked with massive payoffs to the senior cops who, in turn, paid the lower ranks for their escort duties. In 2007, a specialist unit was polygraphed with the support of US law enforcement agency and more than 60% of the police investigators on that unit failed the polygraph. So it's fair to say that criticism of the JCF is justified and easy but in fact I think it's important to look behind that bleak picture and understand why they are in such poor shape and get so much bad press the bottom line is that despite numerous recommendations the jcf has for the most part 
remained a dysfunctional organization that has been reluctant to change on its own and has not been given enough external influence from successive governments to force that change. That means everybody who came into power work with what they did, never really did much to fix it, so the problem remains. PMP, JLP, CMJCF, same problems. Despite recommendations and assurances in the past, the police have a uniform that is not fit for purpose in the 21st century. They are not given the basic equipment to do their jobs. Utility belt with flashlight, pepper spray, handcuffs, and an expandable baton and body armor. They don't even have radios that enable them to talk to their colleagues and control. Only in the last two years has there been any real increase in the budget for the JCF. I believe there has been a realization by this government that if the police do not get the resources, they simply cannot function. Total reform is the only way in which it can become a police service that may win the trust and confidence of the people of Jamaica now without their buy-in the gap of distrust will remain. Rebadging will not be enough. The people of Jamaica will see right through that and nothing will change. There is a need for the transformation to include effective management and accountability. And he laid out a list of things, getting the basics right. The basic practice of policing that have been adopted across the policing world are not always at work in Jamaica. When a person is arrested and charged with a crime, what are the three events that you can guarantee will happen in the US? Here is an example. One, the suspect is photographed. Two, the suspect's fingerprints are taken. Three, the suspect's DNA sample is taken. The bio data are digitally stored. The samples are cross-referenced on a police or forensics lab database and the outcome of that search will either confirm the identity of the prisoner, which it will, reveal other names previously used by this person as well, cross-reference the prisoner's biodata against all unidentified fingerprints and DNA samples recovered from crime scenes, not in Jamaica, not in Jamaica. This not happen in Jamaica. Even though this sample recording of a suspect's biodata is probably the most important action after arrest and charge, it is not done as a matter of fact, as a matter of course. So the golden opportunity to identify the suspect and link him or her to other crimes right there is lost. Hmm. Would you believe if I told you that currently there is no legislation to support the taking of fingerprints of a suspect that is charged with a crime without either the authority of a superintendent or on the order of a court? Think about that. And currently, there are only five automated fingerprint identification services machines across the entire island. The lack of consistency in law is also a concern. As I have already mentioned, the Fingerprint Act, it requires superintendent's authority for fingerprints and photographs to be taken. But under the DNA legislation, it is also only the authority of a sergeant that is required for a sample to be taken. In most jurisdictions, the fact that a person has been charged is enough authority for biodata to be taken, overseen by the custody sergeant or an equivalent. For example, inexplicable reason and despite recommendations from international police officers, consultants and other partners conducting the most simple and effective activities that reap the largest benefits in the detection of crime is simply not done and in most cases the equipment 
is not even available to do them. In a 2022 year, we're still running and functioning the same way. There's a part now called Police Accountability. And Mark Shields said, Improving the governance structures the system of accountability of the police should be one of Jamaica's key legislative priorities. Somebody have to pay. Somebody have to be held accountable for Wagwan. You can't just have things happening and who do we blame? Nobody. Who's in charge? Him but him not, he, he won't face any blame. The current system of shared responsibility between the Public Service Commission and the Police Civilian Oversight Authority is failing to fully provide a performance framework to deliver effectively and efficiently a police service at community levels. There is an urgent need to capture a more progressive and robust approach to police accountability and governance issues and focus on the enhancement of the role of a police authority to make policing more accountable to local communities. Any transformation of the JCF will include a significant budget to send people home, either because they are no longer required or they have lost the confidence of the commissioner and police authority. We need a state-of-the-art police service that the people of Jamaica can trust that will require tough decisions and legislative change that will allow the commissioner of police based on intelligence to rid the JCF of anyone he or she considers corrupt or not fit for any other reason to hold office. I do not expect these individuals to starve or go away empty-handed. I'll be happy to see a reasonable redundancy package and a pension even. I want to know that if the commissioner of police has lost confidence in you, he or she has the ability to remove you from office. This must be supported by a police authority with the requisite powers to hold the police service accountable and have a line of communication with the citizens of Jamaica and be able to hold the commissioner and senior officers accountable for their performance as well. You can't just daddy a collect your big check so and look at the results from your governance. Everything is falling apart. You're not policing properly, but you're allowed to stay in that seat. And Mark Shees was basically saying that that shouldn't be. There should be a level of accountability. And if they see where you are not able to handle your job, them can say, hey, step out. Whether you go with a severance package or, you know, some kind of payoff payment kind of thing, but send you into retirement or take you off the list and put somebody else in place who is going to step up and do what they're supposed to do and respond to being held accountable. Now, successive governments have proclaimed to be the party against crime. But having won elections, we have not seen the type of visible leadership that we are now experiencing with the Andrew Holness administration. I think Jamaicans get a sense that this prime minister really means business. He has thrown all his political capital into reducing crime and restoring order. It has been the PM, prime minister, not the minister of national security, who has stood squarely at the forefront of states of emergencies and zones of special operations. It is the Prime Minister who appears to speak in earnest about bringing the 30-year wait for a transformation of the JCF to fruition, to actually happening. Now, since the declaration of the state of emergency in St. James, murder rates have been reduced from an all-time high in 2016-27 levels to not being seen since about 2002-2003. We need to see the same political maturity and consensus we have seen in the economic recovery as well. The collective works of Audley Shaw, Dr. Peter Phillips and Dr. Nigel Clark must be duplicated in our fight against crime monsters. Crime cannot be a political football. The criminal must see that the politicians are united they are at one especially when it comes to eradicating crime and criminals 
Mark Shields is a security consultant and he is also former deputy commissioner of police in Jamaica. He had a man who come from England, Scotland Yard, um, a veteran that came to Jamaica to actually help to make a difference. These were his words and why? No truer words have been spoken at all. I found it shocking when he said, what happens in the U.S.? Remember me telling us uh, Jamaica needs to emulate the U.S. because they do in other things like popping Mali and putting whole heap of killing this and killing that into their music, all the negative stuff. So let's emulate some of the good stuff to make our society better in Jamaica, right? And Mark Shields laid out and said, what happens when a suspect is arrested? Basic practice of policing that have been adopted across the policing world are not always at work in Jamaica when a person is arrested and charged with a crime. The three things that guarantee will happen in the US, for instance, if you are arrested, you will be photographed. You will have your fingerprints taken and your DNA sample will be taken as well. And the bio database are digitally stored. That basics, right? That's all. In Jamaica, that alone, there's loopholes to that. And there are steps and levels and all kind of craziness. It's not protocol to have these simple, simple things done. So when you see criminal a getaway and able to do their crimes again and again, Remember I told you there is still no national DNA database established? This is what this was talking about. I remember this article was actually printed uh, in 2018. I came across it while doing some research and I thought, man, I need to share this with the audience because this is exactly what is going on now in 2022 as we're halfway through 2022 and heading into 2023. So you see, when people say, yes, government too, although we say don't really blame government because the people need to fix up, but there are things that government need to put in place that they are not putting in place, which is causing the landslide of foolishness that we've been witnessing. With that said, I will leave this video right here and leave your comments in the comment section below and I will catch you on the next video. It's SoFlow TV. I'm out. Peace. All right, folks. So every once in a while, you find a cooking tutorial channel that really hits the nail on the head. If you're tired of following these channels and the food never comes out like you expect it to come out because it's not authentic, then switch over to this authentic Jamaican channel that will cook the food and have you cooking the food in your own house like a real pro. I'm talking about Eat Good TV. All right, just go over to Eat Good TV, hit that subscribe button, tell them SoFlow TV sent you, and pick one of their meals and make it a treat day for your family today. But now I like the oxtail look wicked, the curry chicken look bad, the chef look like she knows exactly what she is doing, and that is because she is authentically Jamaican. The video is clean, you can see every ingredient going into the pot, so you don't have to guess and what that should just put in the pot and the sound quality is clear the visuals are clear the seasoning them look pretty me just get too excited over this eat good tv thing yeah man hear what i'm saying to you go over to eat good tv hit that subscribe button and look at one of those meals and make your family and yourself happy today a lot of you think you can't cook jamaican food but you can with a good tutorial and a good chef like the one that's here on eat good tv